Well, to discuss the 9-11 anniversary a little more, we're joined by author and political commentator, Mr. Mark Glenn, who's joining us via Skype from Idaho. Well, welcome to the program, Mr. Glenn. Tell us about this specific ceremony. Two presidents, current and former, will be attending. Your perception of this? Yes, well, as we have to keep in mind with uh, virtually with all things, things involving American politics, particularly today, uh, this will be just another stage production, just as anything coming out of Hollywood. Uh, if, if Barack Obama, if President Obama and George Bush truly want to do honor to the victims of 9-11, they should open up a, uh, an honest and independent investigation of exactly what took place that day uh, and to bring into the picture some very embarrassing uh, uh, details, such as uh, foreknowledge of certain Middle Eastern governments about the impending attacks that day, governments that are supposed to be, as we are told, allied with the United States, but governments who refused to warn us about it. I'm talking specifically about uh, the state of Israel, the fact that she had enough foreknowledge of these attacks, that she had uh, at least half a dozen of her intelligence officers stationed across the river in Liberty State Park, New Jersey, and who were witnessed filming the destruction that was taking place that day and cheering. Uh, in fact, this, these were the only arrests that took place on 9-11 were these five Israeli intelligence officers. So if uh, President Obama and former President Bush truly wish to do honor to those who lost their lives that day, uh, I think that there needs to be a new chapter that has opened up into the 9-11 investigation, including, of course, Israel's at least four not to the events of, of that day. Well, that's exactly where I'm going next, Mr. Glenn. You mentioned those uh, in, in opening up an investigation into uh, what really happened that day. There's still a lot of myths and mysteries surrounding the events of 9-11. A wide range of people, even in the U.S., believe that 9-11 was an inside job and uh, had some sort of inside cooperation, at least, in order to have an attack of that scope happen. What more can you tell us about to those hypotheses? Well, obviously, uh, this is not something that uh, we would consider a, friend, a fringe a theory for. We, we had the former uh, prime minister or president of Italy who came out and stated clearly that he believed that it was an inside job involving certain elements, high-level elements within the U.S. and with Israel's Mossad. Uh, of course, you had your own honorable President Ahmadinejad address the United Nations General Assembly last September, where he broached the unmentionable topic, which is the possible... Uh, foreknowledge of the attacks of that day on the part of both the U.S. and Israel and the fact that nothing was done to prevent this. So uh, it's not a fringe theory anymore. This is not the, the stuff of uh, tabloid newspapers and checkout lanes anymore. I, my personal theory is that actually every intelligence service of every government in the world knows that the United States and Israel uh, colluded with each other in order to bring these things about, uh, although they, they, these intelligence services and, of course, the, the uh, executive officers that they serve, meaning the presidents or their prime ministers, uh, or even their kings for that matter, uh, even though they may not come out and publicly state this, uh, I think that it is as obvious to them uh, as it is that uh, the United States is involved in these wars for Israel's benefit. So uh, it's, it is something that is going to uh, slowly but surely receive more and more of the light of day. Unfortunately, uh, the American people are probably going to be the last to know about it because we really do live in a uh, closed society. As much as we like to brag to the rest of the world that we are the only, uh, that we are the beacon of freedom and democracy in the world, the fact of the matter is, is that America is a closed society because of the fact that we have total uh, lockdown of information. The American people have virtually no information as to how their government works or, more importantly, foreign policy. If you ask them why we are in Iraq, they'll say, well, because of 9-11. And you point out to the average American that Iraq had absolutely nothing to do with 9-11. Uh, they, they may blink and, and uh, you know, mud some, uh, some little sound to say that, oh, isn't that slightly interesting? And then they'll just go on about their lives, despite the fact that we have lost uh, upwards of 5,000 of our young men and women fighting this war that had nothing to do with uh, the events of 9-11. Mr. Glenn, let's talk about the ripple effects uh of 9-11 in the bit in the bigger picture how much has the united states changed since 9-11 uh, the repercussions that 9-11 had on society its effect on multiculturalism 
at not only in the U.S., but also in European countries as well. Many pin the rise of Islamophobia to the events of 9-11. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it is a different country. The United States is a different country. And I would say that Europe is a different continent as well. It's a different society uh, where, uh, as you pointed out, Islamophobia is the, uh, is the order of the day. We have Muslims being attacked every day in the United States uh, for nothing other than the the crime of being Islamic. Uh, and of course, uh, we saw the tragic events that took place in Norway recently, where this individual, purely out of his hatred for Muslims, that uh, is, the, is the byproduct of a, a concerted effort on the part of these pro Israel groups to foster this hatred between the West and Islam, uh, goes on a rampage and kills, uh, you know, uh, close to 100 innocent children. So uh, there has been a, a great shift in uh, the, the cultures and the societies of the United States and uh, throughout Europe, and not uh, accidentally, by the way. This is exactly what these pro-Israel groups and Israel herself has wanted all along, is to see this clash of civilizations take place between the, uh, the Western Christian world, where the, the uh, preponderance of military and economic power lies, and of course you have to have uh, great military and economic power in order to wage a war against a billion and a half people, which is exactly what this is all about. It is a war against Islam. It's not a war against terrorism. And so uh, they, they, they need to have this clash of civilizations between the Christian and Islamic world to take place. All right, so that Mr. Mark can... Glenn, very yeah. well. I'm sorry I'm going to have to interrupt you. We're running short of time. Mm -hmm. Author and political commentator from Idaho, Mr. Mark Glenn, many thanks for sharing your thoughts with us here on Press TV.